face so today I'm going to show you how I shade match and how I apply my foundation and concealer for my oily skin you shade match to your chest it's the quickest and easiest way to get the best shade match because most of us our chest is lighter than our face especially us in Jamaica where that it's really hot outside the sun is the sun is on a different level a hot right now because I'm gonna understand why it is so hot here but yeah my chest is lighter than my face and my neck is darker than my chest and usually we all want to match our face to our chest and that's a thing but most times people always try to match foundation to their face or to the back of their hand or to their wrist when that doesn't give you a proper shade match so I'm going to throw, show you three different foundations myself okay so the first one is the Maybelline Fit Me and this is in the shade 355 so this one is lighter than me like lighter than me like just by a tad if I wanted to use it I could probably use it but yeah it's lighter than me so what I'm going to do, take a little bit on the back of my hand and just by looking at it, you can see that it's a bit light. The undertone would be a perfect match, but the, the shade is just a little bit wrong. So let me just, I really don't want to use my fingers. <laughs> oh gosh. I can't okay we're just gonna do this so take a little bit on my finger and if you as you can see the shade match is so light but unmatched to my face you can see where my face is darker but the undertone matches matches my undertone yes it's nice and warm and golden but this would look so weird on my skin i would look white cast so the next foundation is the la girl pro coverage hd um foundation and this is in the shade rich cocoa now this matches my skin color but it is red <laughs> the undertone is so red and it's not even like a workable red it's just red so i have to use the wrong finger one pump on the back of my hand I'm, I'm doing a swatch bro you got you gotta squeeze out of the, so just looking at it you can see where it looks so different it's just so it's rich well it's it is named rich coco it's rich but it's it's red man i mean just a little bit swatching it do you see the difference where you can see the redness in this one and this one looks a little bit more golden so this one just just doesn't work because it can be a shade match but the undertone is just nah so the next one where is it? oh sh I got foundation all over me man the next one is my shade which is the Maybelline fit me in the shade 360 mocha now this is both a shade match and an undertone match so uh, and as you can see <laughs> sorry this is the coconut and this is the rich uh the la girl and this is the maybelline of uh, mocha so as you can see i take a little bit And there you can see the three different looks where this is this is the 360 this is a 355 and this is the LA girl you can see where they're drying down a bit so you can see the three different shade ranges on my skin where this one is too light but the undertone matches this one is a match but wrong undertone and this one is the best match I have right now now the other yeah this is what's going on the other foundation I have is a mixture of this and my Maybelline and why I did that is because my Maybelline was finishing 
and I needed a foundation and this was all they had that could fit me because I wanted the Milani foundation but 14 is too red and 13 is too light it's the same situation but this is like a situation like this. I don't think the 14 was redder than this so that's what happened so this is a foundation I showed it in I've showed this in my previous videos where I mixed the Maybelline 360 <gasps> I mixed the Maybelline 360 with the LA Girl. Alright, this is going to be a situation. And let me just take a little bit. You can see that nice full coverage. And it looks a bit light. But it actually is the foundation that I use all the time. This is my match. This is the Maybelline gave it the part on the tone. But it also has the match because remember they both match my skin. It's just that one other tone. The foundations run darker when they come down to my shade. They usually run a, a lot. Something. One of these smell really nice and I don't know which one. So. <laughs> that was. Sorry. Um, so usually when they get down to my shade they're a bit darker. And. My cat is doing something. I might look weird right now because I'm not wearing my glasses and I can't see. I can't see crap. At all but yeah this is how I shade match always try when you go into a foundation store always try to match it to your chest let them match it to your chest not your face because most of our faces are darker than our chest and we want the one look going down the same skin tone going down we don't want to match it to our faces and our faces are still gonna be darker and our chest gonna be brighter. you're gonna see that line of deep marcation so you see when you get a shade match in a store you ask you go outside you go to a window and you go into the sun so try to go in the day when the sun is really hot because if there is one thing that can call you out is the sun so you go into the sun and are you going to a corner and you take a flash photograph so you, because those two things uh, they're your worst enemy when it comes to foundation but they're also your best friend so you leave the store and you ensure that you make them match it to your chest and the one that blends perfect shade match my foundation now the thing is with undertones undertones are kind of weird to figure out because it took me a while to figure out undertones so usually the, the main trick is that you see if you look here if you can see if you can see your veins and your veins look green from here then it means that you are warmer undertones but if they look blue then you're more cool on the tones. Now, that's kind of hard for, especially for dark skin people, because sometimes a lot of us don't have this, this nice. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say nice. We can't really see our veins here. But another thing you can try, you see, if you wear gold found, um, gold jewelry, you get some gold jewelry and you put it against your skin. You see if it looks. If it just looks wonderful and just pops out against the skin, then you're more likely a golden, warm golden undertone. You see, if silver looks better than you, then you're more likely a cooler undertone. So you can usually go with that. So that is the quickest and easiest way for undertones. Undertones are kind of crazy to figure out. I tend to just use my veins and the fact that gold jewelry looks really good on me. Silver doesn't really look so good. So that's usually what I use. I usually look better in like warmer colors. Because honestly, <laughs> I don't wear a lot of cool tone clothes at all. I usually wear some warmer colors. Well, I mostly wear black, so that's a thing. So, after this, the next step is going to be how I apply my foundation. But first, let me go. First thing you do is moisturize. This is, it doesn't matter if you have oily skin. This is coming from somebody who can fry chicken back on their face when their skin get oily. Listen to me. You moisturize your face because especially knowing that you're going to wear foundation that, that uh, no, moisturize man. Moisturize. It doesn't matter. So, I wash my face, take off all of the foundation that I had on my face, ensure that my face is clean and I moisturize my face so it's all nice and hydrated and drink water please especially if you live in jamaica drink water because it's really hot right now so next step is a primer now seeing that now most times you have two different types of primer you have a matte mattifying primer and you have a dewy primer it's more dewy 
gives a more natural finish. Now I have oily skin. I have to take all the precautions that I can take. So I tend to use I tend to use a mattifying primer. Now I use the Sasha um, mattifying um, face primer. The Sasha mattifier face primer. This is what I've been using for a long time now. So I put it mainly in my oily areas the, where I'm prone to oil and that's my T-zone. So right under here, my forehead, my nose, right here and I use it a bit sparingly because I mean I'm not trying to finish it although I can buy more so I apply to these areas and then I just blend this out until it's all completely gone what I'm going to be doing instead I'm going to take my foundation that I made <laughs> I'm going to take a flat foundation brush if I can find it because I'm as oh here it is I'm just gonna take this flat brush and I'm going to take just a little bit on this take a little bit ensure that all of my face is clean and I just swipe it on my face no how I try to put on my foundation to combat my oily skin is that oh crap I only put foundation in certain areas where I usually put it in the center of my face and try to leave the perimeter a bit empty and for the areas that I'm oil prone I don't put as much there so like my nose I'll only put what's left on the brush just dot a little bit on the forehead because that's an oily region as well and whatever's left on the brush I just put it in these areas and on my nose because my nose is usually the first place where foundation breaks up if you know what I mean if you wear foundation you know breaking up means you, you just see it separating so as it, that is what I just put on my face is equivalent to like a pump and a half of any other foundation so then I would take my brush my flat top kabuki it's a really dense foundation brush there's cat hair all over everything in my house like when I say everything has cat hair take my flat top brush and I just blend this all out now as you can see this is this is a this is a very light coverage situation I tend to not wear a lot of foundation because a lot of foundation on oily skin is not cute so that's why I try to keep my skin as nice and clean as possible as try to combat well I don't really have problems with acne but I try to take care of my skin I drink I drink like three liters of water a day I don't know it might seem excessive but Jamaica hot okay it really it really hot like right now it's like 30 something degrees and it's just like 9 o'clock 10 o'clock in the morning it happens me off but yeah and I just blend it out if you want to put more foundation you can put more foundation and I'm not saying that you can't but I tend not to go too heavy handed and just blend this all out and always try to blend up to your always try to blend up to your hairline there's something in my eye and it just won't come out always try to blend up to your hairline because you don't want to look like you're wearing a mask the whole point of foundation is to look like your skin so you blend it upwards and as you can see it looks like I'm not wearing anything is concealer 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 no the black girl staple is the LA girl pro coverage concealers like every black girl has used these at least once in a lifetime no what I tend to do is that 
there's, there's, there's some drilling going on over across the road. It's stressing me out. <laughs> it's stressing me out. So I usually use fawn. I usually use fawn as my highlight shade. But what I realized like a couple months ago was that it gave me this. I don't know what it did, but it did something that I, did, that I didn't like. So what I did, I usually put on my skin tone color first and then I put fawn on top of it so I'm going to take some of my beautiful bronze this is my summer shade I usually wear chestnut but it's hot and my skin is darker so I put this in the areas that I need coverage which is under here because I'm a working girl I wake up at 4 in the morning so I got a lot of dark circles under my eye And the key to font to concealer is less is more. Same with foundation. Less is more. So as you can see, I only squeeze it one time and I use what is on the big fawn. I take fawn and the same process. One thing I use less. Then I use it beautiful bronze. I squeeze out a little. And I just put it directly under my eye. Where I need to brighten up. Just right in that area. And on my forehead. Down the bridge of my nose. And as you can see, there's barely anything on my face. <laughs> I say that while I wear makeup. I try to keep it as minimum as possible because honestly it's daytime I'm not going anywhere but even if I was going anywhere I wouldn't put too much on my face then I take my mahogany this is the darkest shade I think this is the darkest shade and I contour with this I just squeeze up and I have a natural contour line right here so I just follow that contour line squeeze and blend upwards because you want to carve out your cheekbones not create new ones contour line blend upwards put some in my fine head because you know pot cover for it is a thing so you bring it down A little bit under here and all is well sponge that I cut because I wanted a sharper one and I blend all of that together starting with my eye and as I said I blend upwards because I have that glasses situation and I blend around my eyes just so in case I'm putting on eyeshadow it acts as a primer and I just blend and as you can see I'm concentrating in this area because this is the area that needs to be brightened I don't because I didn't put on a lot I don't have to bring it all the way out here I don't have to bring it down so I blend as you can see I'm not swiping because swiping removes product at least for me And then I go over to the other side and I do the same thing. Then I blend out my forehead. My chin. As you can see, blending is mostly just patting it into your skin. You're not swiping or pulling because we don't want to take off the product and I blend out my mustache and I kind of bring it up to connect it to my 
under high under eye highlight and just come around and come around and then I blend out my nose with just the tip of the sponge that pointed tip. And then the next process would be blending out my contour. So I just, as I said, you blend upwards. And for this one, you blend down. Because honestly, I am not trying to look like I have a five head. I am trying to disguise that fact up any more present product and I just bring it down the side of my nose and once I, after I bring it down the side of my nose you can see I bring it upwards as well I take back my blending sponge the tip of it and I just Stamp that into the skin. I know before everything creases because these dry down really fast I take my Sasha buttercup powder I take my powder take my damp beauty blender dip into the powder tap off the excess and I set everything in place When it comes to this first um, part of the process, I tend to use one dip per eye because even though I have oily skin, I don't go overboard with the powder because I don't want my skin to be too matte and then my skin overcompensates for that matteness and produces even more oils. So that is why I tend to be light handed with powder when it comes to this stage and I just bring it up a little. set everything in place and you can already see how bright how bright my under to take my contour powder from city color and I take an angled brush the contour shade and I dip into this tap off the excess and I just go over that contour area. There's cat hair in this as well. And I bring it up and around my temples. Top of excess. underneath my jawline Set it and I dip into my contour powder and I just go over that nose contour And then I take any brush I have and I just blend it out.
use the same old brush and I go over. Now the next process would be to bake and you can bake if you want to but you don't have to. It's, it's, it's a personal choice. If I'm like going somewhere where I know that I'm going to need that extra layer of protection, I can bake but I usually don't. What you can do, what you do is that you take back your buttercup powder or your translucent powder or your pen knife or your Laura Mercier or whatever you have and you just pat the powder into the areas where you know you have the most oil. You just pack it into those areas. To give that extra layer of protection. This is very powdery. Give that extra layer of protection. And you can just carve out your cheeks. Now, the baking process usually it can last from or two. You can wipe it off immediately, or you can let it stay for like ten seconds, thirty seconds to a minute. I personally I don't like to do that because, like I said, when your skin gets too much, when it feels like you've drawn all of the moisture out of your skin, then that is when you start to produce a whole lot of oils. So I tend to just go right back in. And just get a fluffy brush and just blend it all away immediately because I don't want to contend with blocking all day I think it is a very fluffy brush and I just ensure that I blend it all out you can see that that cheekbone highlight the blend it all away now for under my eyes, I tend to go back in with the brush that I used. I either use this brush or I go back in with the brush that I used for my nose contour. Because it's smaller, it gives me a little bit more hand bleach. Hand bleach. You know what I mean. And I just blend it all away. Then you can go over with your fluffy brush. And then you set the rest of your face with any um, powder that you have. I tend to use the Maybelline Fit Me 360 powder um, foundation. I get my foundation brush and dip it in top of excess and all the areas that I didn't bake I just well I usually bring it all over my face but I know me on top of bring it all over my face and I just set my entire face with that powder now you can see my face is well styled it is so styled but we're not finished yet. When you usually after this process, you get a little blush. I use everything in my makeup um, regimen is either eyeshadow or blush, and nothing is used for what it's used for. So I take a little of the Milani Bella Rouge um, um, eyeshadow. I take any tiny fluffy brush. I dip into it top off the excess, get back into it because I just tapped off too much and I just apply it to my cheeks and the thing is this has glitter in it so after I apply this I don't have to apply any highlight if I don't want to tap 
bà em Bà này đó đâu And I bring it back to my temples and let's ensure that I blend it out or complete. Get my setting spray. This is the Maybelline Master Fix. And I just spritz my face. Because honestly, that was a whole lot of powder and we don't want our skin to be looking starved as much as we want it matte. We don't want to be looking just let it dry you can pat it into your skin if you want to and you can just sit there and wait I'm not going anywhere the next process will be to do my brows and my my height my eyeshadow and everything but since I'm not going anywhere I'm not gonna be doing any of that I'll just like maybe just I need Hawaii put on my foundation and my, my highlighter and you can see the fact that although you know that I'm wearing you know that I'm wearing foundation you know that I'm wearing makeup it doesn't look like I'm wearing it and that's the entire trick to makeup you're not supposed to look like so you do the minimum necessary and if you want to go full glam you just that's just how I do it as I said everybody can do it differently you can find your own products most like let me know what you want to see next let me know what you didn't like let me know what you liked and in advance i'm sorry for the audio quality i live close to the road and i don't have a mic but yeah bye thank you for watching